So the last couple things that I want to talk about, we've already covered in the previous videos, but they're going to be in the slideshow, so I want to formally cover them, um, are the type tool and then using guides to set up your workspace. And so we've already talked a little bit about type and the things that you need to know about the type tool are that in order to add text to your document, you must use the type tool. And then you can't simply just use it. You can't just click and start typing. You have to click and drag and you have to create a box that the text is going to go in and you can only put text in the box until the box is full. If you try to put more text in the box than will fit, you can keep adding the text, but you won't see it. It'll create what's called overset text, and that's an error, it's a problem, and you'll have to go back and fix that because obviously if you added words, you added them for some reason and you wanted someone to be able to see them. Once you have added your text, if you highlight it, and you have to highlight it with your text tool, you can highlight your text and you can edit it using the character and the paragraph panels. But you could also, if you have the type tool selected, use your control bar at the top of the screen because it's going to change to be uh, to have settings that are connected to the tool you have selected. And so if you have the type tool selected, there'll be type settings. The last thing I want to show you before I jump to InDesign to show you this um, is that when you're adjusting your color at the bottom of your tools panel or really anywhere that you see the fill and the stroke icon, um, when you see it the way that it's viewed right now, it's assuming that you have some sort of shape selected. But you can switch and you can select a little T that's beneath it and you can say, no, I want to adjust the, the type color. I want to adjust the fill color and the stroke color of my text. And if you select that, the icons for the fill and the stroke, they'll have a giant T in them indicating to you that if you make a change right now, you're changing the color of the text, not the box the text is in. And so if we jump back to InDesign, I have some boxes here and we can use them for, for our example if we want to. Let's zoom in a little bit here. If I was trying to make some sort of button that says, I don't know, says yay, um, you can click and drag to make a box with the type tool and you can add text in that says yay. And then you could highlight it and you can make adjustments to it. So if you come up to your control bar up here, you can change typeface. And so this one's fun, so we can use that one. Although I don't think it has, it doesn't have punctuation. So let's use one that's, that's actually installed. Let's use this guy. Um, you can do it that way. Or a fun fact is if you grab your type tool and you click any other shape, it becomes a text box. And so when you create a text box using the type tool, it can only be rectangle or square. But if I make a circle first and then I click on it with the type tool, it becomes text box, so now it thinks it says yay up here. Now, I would have to do some things to it to make it work the way I want. Maybe on my control bar, I find my um, alignment options and I center it. And then maybe until we learn a better way, maybe I hit enter a bunch of times to bring it down to the middle. But you can highlight the text. You can make it bigger. Whoa, that was way too zoomed in. You can make it bigger. Maybe we make it 72 points. Whoops, 72 is too big. So let's try 36 or even 48. Maybe I have to get rid of some of them. Once you have the text formatted, so you're going to play around with your character in your paragraph panel, or even you're going to play around with your control bar and use the character in the paragraph settings, you're still probably going to want to change the color of the text. And to do that, you have to highlight the text, or technically you don't have to, but if I grab the circle with my black mouse, um, if I look at the colors that are displayed on the tools panel, it's showing me the fill and the stroke color. If you hit the little T, it'll switch and show you that you have a black fill color on your text, and then you have no fill color on the outside. And so technically, you can uh, technically you can change a color without having to um, to highlight. However, I think it's easier to highlight because then you can visually see what you're changing. In this example, I've highlighted the whole thing and I'm going to change the whole thing. But I could just highlight one of the letters or maybe I'm going to make all the letters purple and then this letter I'm going to make yellow or something like that. And so I'd recommend click with your type tool and highlight the text you want to change. And then when you go to your options to change the color, you'll know that you're changing the type because it will tell you this is the fill color of your text and this is the stroke color of your text. And then you can use those same ways to change the color. And so let's hit cancel here. And so if you double click anywhere you see the fill color, you can open the color picker and you can change it to the color that you want for your project. It looks blue now because it's inverted, but once I deselect, it's yellow. 
You can even highlight it and you can change the stroke color the same way. So maybe you want a green color for the border and then you can deselect again. You can change it any way that you have been learning and so maybe you want to use the same green color that is on the, the outside of your circle. We save that as a swatch over here. And so if you highlight your text, you can say, I want the stroke color, see the strokes in the foreground. I want the stroke color to be the green. And now it's the same color green as the outside. And maybe now I don't like the yellow. So maybe I highlight that and I say, well, let's try blue. Oops. Make sure that you switch. See how right here I have this stroke color still selected? I want to change the fill color. And so maybe I want to try out blue and see what that looks like. Maybe I like that better. Maybe I don't. I don't know. Uh, but it allows me to experiment and give it a try. Maybe I want it to look like the text is the same color, so it's purple. So now, oops, that's not the right color, purple. We forgot to change the fill color of this one. And so now you can kind of make it look like it doesn't have a fill color, it's just the outline. Or you could even take that color and you could change it and say I want it to be slightly different so it stands out a little bit. I would like you to experiment and play with changing the fill and the stroke color of both text and shapes for your project so that you're comfortable with it. Um, a lot of the times you're not going to do all four of those at the same time, but I would like you to get used to doing that. There's one last thing in the slideshow that I want to talk about, and that is, we already talked about this, the idea of using guides. Guides are non-printing elements for your workspace that allow you to line things up or separate things, but they're not printing. You're not going to see them. Um, they just kind of help you divide the workspace. And so we're going to we're going to add guides by clicking and dragging on your rulers. And if your rulers are not open, you won't be able to do this, so you need to turn your rulers on. And so if you go to the view menu, right now it says hide rulers because my rulers are, are open. If yours doesn't say hide, if it says open rulers or view rulers, um, then you'll have to turn them on. In addition, when you're using guides, there's like lots of things in the workspace that are going to appear that are not printing and sometimes they're kind of annoying. If you go to the view menu and go to grids and guides, you can always hide the guides and then you can turn them back on when you need them and turn them off when you don't need them. So if we're getting ready to do our project, let's zoom in here. I'm going to do command A, select all and hit the delete key so that everything goes away. If you click and drag from either ruler, so if I click and drag from the top ruler or the horizontal ruler or I click and drag from the vertical ruler, you will pull out a guide. And so if I click from the horizontal ruler, I'm pulling out a horizontal guide. This might not come through exactly on the, on the video and I apologize if it's, if it's not strong enough. And then when you let go, you can drop the guide. And so you can use that to kind of divide your workspace, and if I grab from the left hand side here, into nine different areas of your page. And that's what I would like you to do for your project. I want you to figure out how to make nine little cells and I just want you to design a little fun fact about yourself inside each one. Um, if I'm not your teacher and that's not your project, obviously don't do that. But if I'm your teacher, if you're listening to my videos and I'm your teacher, then that's what I want you to do. For this project, you don't have to be a master of getting them perfect. And so I'd say what you see on the screen right now is, is okay. Uh, but if you wanted to reposition them so it's a little bit more balanced, you can click on a guide and see how it's dark blue now instead of light blue. And once you click on it, you can drag it back and forth. Sometimes you ax whoops. Put that back. Sometimes you actually drag out too many guides and you're like, oh, I didn't need those. If you select it, you can hit the delete key and it will disappear. Or what I like to do is if you grab it and you kind of throw it upward, like really far, it will just disappear and it will go away. It's kind of more work than hitting the delete key, but it's kind of fun. And then you can click and drag and you can reposition your guides um, until they are about even. They don't have to be perfect. We'll learn how to make them perfect in future lectures, but they don't have to be perfect for right now. Um, one thing I do want to remind you of is when you're working on your project, um, do not delete your guides. So put your guides in and design around your guides. And when you submit your file to me, do not delete the guides before you send it to me because I want to see your guides. And part of the grading for the project is the proper use and application of those guides. And so if you delete them, I can't give you credit for that part of the activity.